safe from the Redneck Garage. Well, I'm out here with a Prius because Jennifer decided she wanted to drive the Jeep. Now that she's driving the Jeep when it's pretty outside, she calls me and says, Hey, when I'm in the drive through at Starbucks, the motor sounds like it's going really fast. We got a check engine light and the idle's messed up. So I don't know if it's vacuum lines or computer or whatever else, but the next series we're going to have on the Redneck Garage is going to be electrical systems on the Jeep, checking codes, that kind of thing. And before we get into that, I figured I might as well fix what's wrong with it so I don't look like a doofus. <laughs> so let's take a look at what it takes to get a check engine light fixed and also why the idle's messed up. Just thought I'd give you a little preview of coming attractions. This is my Toyota 86 pickup and I love my little truck. I've had it for 20 years. Um, truly a great truck, but you can see on the beds that it's getting the Toyota rust. And eventually usually gets every one of these little Toyotas, the, the bed gets destroyed on it. Um, right at that seam, always at the seam. Now I could cut it out and try to patch it and then bondo it, but what we're gonna be doing is putting some fiberglass bedsides on it. And that's gonna be uh, a kind of a cool video series to, to replace those. I'm ordering those from California. They make replacement bedsides for it. And uh, we're gonna see how difficult that is, but we're gonna get her back in top shape and paint it. So it'll be a sweet little painting, bedside, all that kind of thing going on. Okay, now with your Jeep, you're gonna have to do some diagnostic work. Um, I use a Maxxis Pro uh, by Altel. This has been a great little tablet as far as like um, being able to diagnose what's wrong with it. It's got a lot of different features and functions. This comes with the interface module, the J3524, something like that. I'm gonna show you here in a minute. And you can actually go to manufacturer's websites if you're subscribed to it and download actually flash programs. You can flash the computer and things. So it's got a lot of functionality as far as that goes. I've flashed Fords and, and GMs and Chryslers with it. Uh, you do have to be subscribed. You can do a one day subscription to be able to do it. Uh, if you're a shop, you can pay like I think $1,500 or $800, whatever it is from the manufacturer to be a subscriber and you can just download this file. So it is really pretty cool as far as that goes. So let's take a look at what it's telling us. Now this thing's crazy of everything that it'll do. It actually is an Android tablet, so um, we're going to go ahead and go into Maxis, which is Diagnostics, Maxifix, Updates. Um, there's a lot of updates I need to do, but we're going to go to Diagnostics first. And I'm going to go to Jeep. Okay. It's loading the program. This wirelessly connects to the J2534 ECU programming device. Um, this actually will hook up to a laptop to do flashing on some of the cars. Some of them you can do through the tablet, but some of them you have to do through a laptop with the uh, uh, software you can download from the other thing. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, this does plug in. It can interface with a laptop. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what's wrong with the Jeep because we did have a check engine light before any of this happened. So I'm gonna turn on the Jeep and you can indeed see there's the check engine light. I've put in the year, make and model and I'm just gonna hit auto scan and it's going to execute all DTC tests, yes. It's going to scan it through all of this and it takes a few minutes so we'll come back. The two codes that are entered are PO121, TPS voltage does not agree with map sensor and one to one fuel system lean. If you've been watching you notice I've had a problem with the idle on it and absolutely the TPS could be the reason that it's not idling correctly. Um, the 171 fuel system lean could be because of the TPS also you know they kind of go hand in hand so I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Okay, I actually unhooked the TPS and now the engine's running at 941 like it's supposed to. Um, we'll set the RPM at 1000. right on the money. Now I'm going to plug in the TPS and we'll see what happens. We're at 1700 RPM so obviously we got a bad TPS switch. So I'm going to get one of those. We're going to put it on and then we'll continue this crap. But that's what's wrong with the idle on this stupid thing. The computer can't override the TPS. Somebody's flying a drone. Got my shotgun. 
So I got my Milwaukee light out here and it's lighting up the night. Gonna put on the new TPS sensor. So in the effort of time, I went ahead and bought a uh, TPS sensor from AutoZone and it was about 50 bucks. Uh, I went ahead and bought a couple extra ones on eBay and they were 13 apiece. The ones on eBay are probably made at the same Chinese factory as the ones at AutoZone, except they're about a quarter of the price. TPS sensor is back here on the back side of your throttle body. It takes two, two torx bolts. I'm going to go ahead and take it off, slap the new one on, and we'll see what happens. There we go. Okay, so the throttle's back where it's supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and clear those codes. Uh, and then we'll look at the other part. All right, so that's much better. I'm going to go ahead and clear the codes and we'll take her for a little test drive. All right, she's idling just exactly where she's supposed to be, and that looks great. Um, one of the cool things about this scanner is that you can actually look at live data. You can look at everything that's going on with the truck. The idle's 748, and the target is supposed to be 752, so it's right on where it's supposed to be. Um, it'll tell you purge duty cycles. It'll tell you everything on this stinking thing, uh, which is really cool. So what did we learn today? Well, first of all, it wasn't a vacuum leak. It was the TPS module that was bad. Second of all, if you buy your parts online, you can pay about a quarter of the price you can down at AutoZone. And third, a really good scanner is a super helpful tool to be able to diagnose what's wrong with your vehicle, whether it's a Jeep or a Toyota or whatever it is. Um, they're great. Now, the next video is going to be uh, diagnosing what's wrong with your truck when you can't get anywhere that it dies completely. That was kind of the scope of this video, but kind of we went sideways because I had that check engine light. Figured we better fix that first. So the next video, we go through troubleshooting tips of common Jeep electrical issues that will leave you stranded. That's going to be it for today. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Key! Turning wrenches.